Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Varnishes, Lacquers and Industrial Coatings. Before going into the details of uh, today's lecture, what we will be doing? We will be having a kind of recapitulation of what we have discussed uh, in last couple of lectures. We started discussing about uh, surface coating industry products in which we have seen that there are many products like uh, paints, pigments, varnishes, enamels, lacquers, etc. Then we have seen what are their constituents, what are their constituents, those things we have seen, especially uh, you know uh, when it is coming to the paints, we have seen that you know it constitutes primarily a liquid vehicle and then pigments, right. So, these liquid vehicles are maybe volatile, non-volatile, uh, etc. and then they can be sometimes resins also. Uh, sometimes you know additives are also being added and then these uh, uh, to this uh, liquid portion sometimes oils are also added which are nothing but uh, film forming uh, agents or uh, they help film forming, not only helping the film forming but also it allow drying it. So, then drying is another issue of uh, these products. So, drying is nothing but you know uh, making the surface, whatever making the uh, thin layer of the these products applied on a structure or something like that. So, then that has to be uh, you know hardened. So, the hardening of that sir thin layer whatever applied is known as the drying. So, for this purpose you know some chemical changes occurs like oxidation or the, you know polymerization in addition to evaporation right these kind of things uh, you know occurs. So, obviously when uh, we are calling is there is a drying is uh, there. So, then dryers or uh, promoters or catalyst which are th these are the terms used for the drying substances. When you add some kind of uh, foreign materials like promoters or catalyst, the drying becomes an improved. So likewise, oils, what are the oils, what are their you know, what are their uh, you know requirements, etc. we have seen. Then coming to the uh, pigments, uh, what are the uh, requirements of uh, uh, pigments, they should uh, provide in a product and then how they are prepared, etc. Uh, these things uh, we have seen. Then primarily uh, in manufacturing process, manufacturing uh, of uh, paints we have started, it we have taken as a kind of generalized one not specific to any kind of paint, how to make paints then we have realized that it is primarily mixing and then grinding are the operations or grinding and mixing are the primarily unit operations involved in the uh, paints manufacturing. That is in other words in manufacturing of the paints or paint formulation there are uh, no chemical uh, operations, there are no unit processes are there, there are no reactions are there only uh, you know physical changes or mechanical changes something like grinding, mixing etc. are only being there. Of course, before uh, start making paints whatever the constituents are there you know uh, of the paints let us say pigments, pigment is one of the important constituents along with the vehicles like you know you know oils etc. So, how these are prepared here in these cases uh, in the manufacturing of the pigments and oils there may be some kind of chemical processes. After applying the uh, paints again you know uh, drying of uh, you know layer that has been applied is also you know there. So, which, which, which may be including you know chemical changes like oxidation, polymerization etc. But as long as making the paints there is you know nothing there is no chemical reaction or no chemical process is occurring, only physical changes are occurring that is those things we have seen. Then we also discussed about the pigments, right. So, these pigments you know how uh, you know uh, you know how many types are there, those things we have seen depending on the colors etc. We have seen different types of pigments are there. So, we cannot discuss manufacturing of each and every pigment. So, then we have taken uh, discussion on white pigments and then what are the different types of white, pig, white pigments available, you know how to manufacture white pigments by uh, lithopones and then uh, how to manufacture you know white pigments something like lithopones or 
titanium dioxide etc these kind of things we have seen right in this lecture we are going to discuss about the you know varnishes lacquers and then industrial coatings etc these things we are going to discuss right before going to the discussion today uh, we may not be having any flow charts etc because we have already seen you know uh, whether it is paints or you know lacquer enamel etc whatever it is it is primarily mixing of a resinous material or a vehicle and then you know uh, another uh, constituents like oils etc so that process may be quite similar from one to other only the applications and then constituents may be changing so that's the reason we'll be having a few basics about these things only not about their manufacturing processes because manufacturing processes obviously they will be different from one uh, paint to other paint one varnish to other varnish but in general they may be similar right so that similar approach that we have already seen in the previous lecture uh, through paint manufacturing okay similarly we have also seen the pigment manufacturing through you know manufacture of a white pigments part okay so now let us start with varnishes we have already uh, seen that varnishes are nothing but unpigmented colloidal dispersions we have already seen that these varnishes are unpigmented there are no pigments in the varnishes that's the reason we have seen that they are clear when we are talking about the few basics of individual surface coating industry products in the first lecture of uh, this chapter we have seen these are mostly clear and then they provide transparent uh, you know layer whatever the film forms by applying varnishes on a structure usually you know they are transparent because they are unpigmented because the pigments what they do they provide opaqueness and then surface covering ability and then uh, they also provide you know uh, resistance to resistance or they offer the resistance against the destructive sun uh, destructive lights uh, you know uh, destroying the surface of uh, you know structure on which they are applied so all these things are coming because of the pigments so if there is no pigment in varnishes so you do not expect that you know resistance to destructive uh, rays would be uh, you know good enough it will be there it may be low okay so since it is not there so then the surface would not be opaque it will be you know transparent kind of uh, surface you will be getting okay now what are if they are unpigmented how they are prepared they are prepared by the solutions of synthetic or natural resins in oils and or thinners right so oils will provide some kind of a you know uh, surface forming ability or help surface forming ability or drying the layer that has been formed right thinner sometimes required in order to meet the uh, required uh, you know uh, you know thinness to the surf, uh, to the paint or the uh, to the varnish or the product okay so now so since they are uh, uh, solutions of synthetic or natural resins and oils are thinners so they are also used for protective as well as the decorative purpose however protection may not be as good as paint or uh, enamel lacquers etc provides and then the layers that have been formed or film formed because of applying the varnishes on a given structure would get dried by different approaches like evaporation oxidation and polymerization and that also depends on the what are the constituents if the uh, resin that has been uh, dispersed or you know made as a solution in oils if that resin is very thick or very viscous so then obviously drying may take time and then Uh, rather depending primarily on evaporation you have to concentration uh, concentrate in oxidation and polymerization or even adding plasticizers if required so as mentioned already since these are not pigmented they are uh, less resistant to damage by light than are paints enamels and then pigmented lacquers because these pigments they provide resistance to uh, destructive lights these pigments which are present in the paints or lacquers etc they uh, resist the destructive lights to reach the surface on which these uh, you know uh, these pigments or uh, paints uh, these paints or uh, lacquers etc are been applied so since here in varnishes they are not there so then these things would be less resistant to the damage by the light than our paints and also since they are not pigmented this varnish transparent film because pigments are usually opaque and then they provides uh, proper surface uh, covering proper surface covering ability they have pigments you know they are opaque and they have proper surface coating uh, 
or surface covering ability. Since if it is not there, so then you, whatever the product varnish is there, that is that will provide you transparent film. Okay. These are frequently oleoresinous, and there are two minor types within this. They are spirit varnishes and Japan's. Now we see a few uh, basic information about this spirit varnishes and Japan's as well. However, before going to the discussion about uh, spirit varnishes and Japan's, we have uh, uh, information about what are these oleoresinous varnishes. They are nothing but solutions of one or more natural or synthetic resins in drying oil and then volatile solvent. These volatile solvents are often methanol or ethanol or some kind of ketones or hydrocarbons etc. They are very volatile. So, since they are vol very volatile, you know, while uh, making these varnishes or manufacturing varnishes, as well as when we applied them on a, a structure, they cause a pollution because they quickly evaporate because they are more volatile. So, there is a pollution issue associated with these varnishes as well, right? So, then you may be thinking why not to go for non-volatile solvent? If you take non-volatile solvent, then these resins may not be dissolved properly in the non-volatile solvents. That is, that could be a reason. So, drying oils used in these varnishes produce natural brittleness of uh, pure uh, resin film. These oleoresinous varnishes were formerly of major importance. However, because of certain issues, nowadays alkyds and then urethanes have largely replaced the uh, oleoresinous varnishes. Why? Because of the durability and then alloying, ease of application and beauty. What when you when you use the varnishes made up of alkyd and urethane resins, then you get a better durability. Then alloying problem would be less by applying or using this alkyd uh, varnishes. And then application. It is application is not just simply like you know brush applications or applying by brush or dip coating or spray coating. There are different types of other uh, methods of applications are also there. Considering all those things, ease of application is possible if we use alkyd and urethane varnishes rather than oleoresinous varnishes. Also, when you apply alkyd and urethane uh, varnishes on the surface, the surface look more beautiful compared to the uh, surfaces on which oleoresinous varnishes are applied. So, because of these things nowadays, we most of the varnishes are alkyd based varnishes. Later on, development of water thin varnishes has also taken place because as I mentioned, these uh, varnishes are made in the you know natural or synthetic resins in uh, volatile uh, solvents, right. So, these volatile solvents are usually alcohols, ketones, etc. So, while making or while mixing them and then preparing these uh, varnishes, lot of pollution causes are there because these solvents are more volatile. And then also, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, when you apply any of the surface coating industry, there is a, there may be a kind of spillover. So, you are supposed to clean it as, as easily as possible and then as effectively as possible. Further, you know, tools that you are using for applying these uh, products, let us say, uh, you know, fluid as bed coating is there, electro beam coating is there, and then uh, dip coating is there, and then uh, you know, brush coating is there. So, the different types of application methods are there. So, then you may be using different tools, right? So, those tools, uh, whenever you use, you should be able to clean them effectively and then able to reuse next time whenever you require it, right? So, they should not be one time use and throw kind of thing. That is, the product should not be like that. So, because of these two reasons, water thin varnishes have been developed because if the product is uh, water thin kind of thing, you can easily clean the tools which are uh, utilized for applying these products and then also you can remove the stains, etc. If, uh, if at all there is a, you know, spillover of the product is there. So, because of these two reasons, the water thin varnishes have also been developed. That is pressure to reduce the amount of air polluting solvents in varnishes and paints and then desire for water cleanup of tools used for applying these products and then spillovers as well, right? Now, we talk about the uh, spirit varnishes. Spirit varnishes, they are again 
since they are varnishes obviously they will be solutions of resins in volatile solvents in volatile solvents only and they are non film forming if they are non film forming how the film formation is taking place uh, when you apply these uh, varnishes that may be question so then there may be some kind of oils may be added so these oils will provide you know film formation required film formation solvents such as methanol alcohol hydrocarbons ketones and the likes are used and then they may cause some kind of pollution as well not only pollution since they are uh, very volatile what happens they may quickly dry up if they are quickly drying up what happens there may be cracks formation possibility may be there even sometimes you know peeling of the uh, applied layer may, uh, from the surface may take place if the you know drying is very quick okay these get dry more most rapidly but are likely to be brittle and then eventually crack and peel off unless suitable plasticizers are added so in if you are applying spirit varnishes most often it is required that you may be adding plasticizers as well along with the oils preparation of these products involve active stirring sometimes heating to bring about the desired solution whether it is varnishes paints or lacquer enamels or whatever industrial coating products etc whatever you take most of them are you know involved in proper stirring and then mixing okay an important example of spirit varnishes is shellac or solution of the resin shellac in methanol or alcohol alcohol means here ethanol next type of oleo resinous uh, uh, varnish is japans these are rarely used nowadays these are opaque varnishes if you are calling them uh, varnishes then how come opaque is coming into the picture because uh, in the uh, varnishes we are not uh, using pigments and then whatever the uh, opaque nature is there that is coming by pigment so why how the opaqueness comes into the varnishes that because of adding some kind of asphalt or similar material being added to uh this uh, japans to get the required color according to their method of application they may be subdivided into baking semi baking and air drying japans now we talk about alkyd resins because we have seen this alkyd resins are found to be a uh, better uh, option to make resins rather than oleo resinous uh, uh, materials because of their durability one of the reason and then less alloying another reason and then ease of application and then beauty that, that they provide if they are present in the varnishes that is what we have seen so then it is better to see what are these alkyd resins right why what for they are made since they are uh, you know you know uh, their durability is better they used for exterior use right because of their durable vehicles whereas modified phenolic varnishes are used for interior uh, finishes uh, phenolic varnishes or phenolic resins are other kind of uh, you know uh, things are there like for uh, like phenol formaldehyde resins etc okay we are going to see them as well depending on the cost and then end use their composition varies widely some are applied with a brush others are sprayed on the surface that is either spray coating or brush application methods are used if you are if you are having alkyd uh, resinous varnishes and when this alkyd resinous uh, varnishes are dried or hardened then by baking they are particularly durable if you are doing the hardening or uh, drying by baking method then the durability is better alkyd amen resins are used to improve the quality as well these are the few details about the varnishes and then different types of resins you know that are used to, to make uh, these varnishes because varnishes are nothing but the colloidal dispersion or the colloidal solution of a synthetic or natural resins in some kind of a volatile solvents along with the oils now we start discussing about the lacquers what are the lacquers they are nothing but you know synthetic thermoplastic film forming materials dissolved in organic solvents similar like other uh, products like paints and varnishes but here what we have synth we can have either synthetic uh, materials we can have thermoplastic materials we can have film forming material as well and then but dissolved in organic solvents only okay because 
many of the thermoplastics and synthetic resins do not dissolve in other kind of solvents. These get dried primarily by solvent evaporation, okay. sometimes there may be some oxidation also, but polymerization is almost absent in the drying of the lacquers. Upon addition of pigments to lacquers, one can get lacquer enamels or pigmented lacquers. Actually, uh, people confuse with the enamels and then lacquers are separately. You can take as a kind of you know, probably if you have the pigments also added to the lacquers, then whatever the products that you get, you get you call them enamels. Or varnishes, uh, if you have the varnishes, if you have the pigmented varnishes, then they are also called as uh, enamels. So, maybe uh, we can say this pigmented varnishes are pigmented lacquers are nothing but the enamels. Okay? Their use is currently limited to coating furniture only primarily. When used to coat automobiles, enamels are habitually referred to as lacquers as well. Surface coatings packed in pressurized cans are usually lacquers, they can be clear, colored or metallic. But vinyl coatings have better resistance to abrasion, sunlight and then moisture. For the purpose of uh, prevent corrosion of uh, machinery, epoxies and then stainless steel flakes in vinyl are developed. Okay? So, these epoxies and then stainless steel flakes are also used as a, a industrial coatings or you know marine surface protection purpose also they are used in general, we are going to discuss them anyway. So, that is what about uh, um, some information about the lacquer. So, now what we have uh, uh, seen now, you know uh, most of the architectural coatings are you know uh, trade sale coating material or architectural coatings we have seen because this uh, uh, whatever the surface coating industry products are there, they are two types that is what we have seen that is one is the trade sale or architectural coating, another one is the industrial coatings. So, now till now we have seen trade cell coatings, all those things paints, varnishes, lacquers, etc. all of them are you know uh, comes under the trade cell coatings. Now, we start discussing about the industrial coatings. Industrial coatings, now we talk about industrial coatings, often alkyd resins, phenolic resins, acrylics, epoxies, urethanes, fluoro polymers, polymides etc. are used in industrial coatings or may be directly used as industrial coatings. So, what we are going to see? We are going to see what are these alkyd resins, phenolic resins, what are their purposes, if at all their merits, demerits etc. those things we are going to discuss now. Alkyd resins are used extensively in industrial coatings. They are widely compatible with oils and other resins. This is one of the reasons that you know even in varnishes also you know uh, oleoresinous uh, uh, varnishes are being replaced by this alkyd resinous varnishes because they are compatible, their compatibility durability is better not only as individual but also when if you want to mix with other oils and then other resins you know their compatibility is very good. That is one of the important thing that these alkyd resins are used in uh, varnishes as well. But their durability and resistance to water, sunlight, chemicals is inferior to that of phenolics. Okay? So, what are these phenolics? Phenolic resins like uh, phenol formaldehyde resins etc. those things are also used sometimes for coating purpose. Phenolics are used to resist alcohols and then food acids particularly in cans and containers wherever these food items etc are you know stored in cans and containers, you need to do some kind of coating of those uh, cans and containers etc. So, for that purpose these phenolic resins or phenolic industrial coatings are used, they are good at resisting alcohols as well. But their use in varnish has lost out to urethanes and other film formers. Now the acrylics, acrylics 
they are available as thermoplastics as well as, as, well as the thermo setting types. There are some kind of mixtures of these two are also possible. They represent the current optimum combination of price, durability, flexibility and appearance or the beauty. Considering all four factors that is you know appearance, flexibility, durability and price, presently this acrylic industrial coatings are better or they provide optimum combination of these uh, four important factors in any of the industrial uh, coating products or even trade sale um, coating products as well. They are used in automotive top coats, most of the automotive top coats are done by this acrylic industrial coatings. Then epoxies are used in plants where chemical resistance is essential. In any of the chemical plant if you take there is uh, you know a possibility that each and every uh, part of the plant including unit operations, unit uh, processes, connecting pipes, etc. everything are exposed to one or other kind of chemicals. So then chemical resistant, uh, uh, resistance is very much essential. So in some of the plants you know epoxies are used to uh, are used as a industrial coating so that to have chemical resistance onto the products or in even in the plant. These require a curing agent, but these curing agents are expensive. These are used on appliances as linings or for uh, prime coating as well. Whereas the urethanes are strongly adherent to metal and resist both chemical attack and abrasion as well. Their clarity and resistant to weather make them useful for severe industrial services. So, industrial services rather going for the epoxies if you can go for uh, urethanes the options would be the better because you know uh, their resistance to the weather and then you know chemical attack abrasion uh, resistance to the chemical attack as well as the abrasion is better right. Also you know you know they are you do not need any kind of uh, uh, you know curing agent uh, which are uh, expensive so then that way also urethanes are better. Other types of uh, resins are fluoropolymers, they represent the current maximum in weather resistance. If you are looking uh, weather resistant only for the industrial product to have industrial coatings then you can go for the fluoropolymers. But in addition to the weather resistance if you wanted to look at the chemical attack and an abrasion then it is better to go for the urethanes based industrial coatings. Fluoropolymers, you know, they provide slick surface and then good wear resistance cause them to be used as coatings for uh, snow shovels, saws, aircraft, shoot liners, etc. Okay. Other type of resins used in industrial uh, coatings are polyimides. They are used to coat uh, special pans and other uh, material that must resist temperature of 275 degrees centigrade continuously or 450 degrees centigrade maximum briefly. Most of the pans you know they are having polyimide resins are coating because their temperature you know would not go more than 275 degrees centigrade uh, for application different types of applications. Then if you are exposing them to a temperature less than 275 degrees centigrade continuously so then these are the better options. But however, if you are going beyond that one only briefly you can go up to 450 degrees centigrade not continuously. So that was about a, a few basics about the different types of resins used uh, in industrial coatings. Now we see the application methods of industrial coatings. As I mentioned not only brush coating, uh, dip coating or spray coating but there are many other methods are also available for applications of the surface coating. Uh, uh, industry products. So, some of them we are going to see especially with respect to the industrial coatings. They, some of them may be having some advantages, some disadvantages like that you know each one may be having some merits and demerits those things we are going to see only a few basics. Brush applying it is good but it is very time consuming whereas the dip tanks it cheaper but coating is uneven whereas the conventional spray equipment they are cheaper but gives uniform results only by skilled operators. Often results highly variable film thickness. If you are not experienced enough to have a you know use the spray 
coating equipment so then you may have a highly variable film thickness and then obviously cause pollution. So, wherever uh, you might have seen that whenever some surfaces are being coated using you know spray coater so then surrounding area is very much polluted. So, they cause pollution. Next one is the electrostatic uh, spraying. When you talk about the electrostatic spraying that means you know the surface on which you are uh, doing the coating. So, the surface and then coating must be having opposite charges. Okay? So, paint droplets are made to carry a charge of one polarity while the object being painted is oppositely charged. This sharply reduces the waste and gives uniform coat. And then it is, its use is limited to metal objects in spray booths only. The next method is coil coating of sheets. Coil coating of sheets in the sense whatever uh, the uh, surface that you wanted to coat they are passed through you know some kind of you know uh, you know coils kind of thing. Okay? It is done by passing through baths. Sometimes it is also followed by uh, uh, leveling rollers as well for the sheets on which you are doing the coating. It is efficient in use of uh, fluids, there is no uh, loss kind of thing. But the problem is that whenever you have this uh, passing sheets through baths kind of thing, you know uh, edges may not be properly coated, that may be an issue. So, but edges are hard to coat properly. Next method of application is electrostatic deposition. So, may be used with aqueous dispersions. These dispersions of the types are alkyds, polyesters, epoxies, acrylics, etc. Okay? So, but they are solubilized with alkalis something like ammonium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. However, you get great coating uniformity by anodic or cathodic deposition using voltages between 300 to 450 volts. Good thing about this one, the current would stop or the voltage passes would stop if you have the coating of 25 to 40 microns thickness. That is the reason you get great uh, coating uniformity because once the thickness of the coating becomes 25 to 40 microns automatically you know uh, current would stop. Why this current would stop automatically when this uh, surface become of you know uh, the coating whatever applied becomes 25 to 40 micron size because after that one you know primarily it is the resin that is you know being exposed for the deposition and then that is having insulating properties not the surface on which we are applying. Okay? Coated part requires 30 minutes at 175 degrees centigrade to produce a cross linked thermoset polymer film. This is the problem but however these kind of things are applied for this specific purposes only. In anodic coating, iron is dissolved from metal and thus corrosion starts before the steel is coated. Because of that reason, current practices favors cathodic coating where metal ions are held back and positive resin ions deposit on the steel. Next method is fluidized bed coating and electrostatic spray coating. So, here in these processes you know coating is very better but there is a lot of wastage also there. These are used to coat metals with powders, after coating they are fused. Okay? These techniques are used with the different types of coating materials or resins like epoxies, vinyls, nylons, polyethylenes, polypropylenes, chlorinated polyethers, melamines and several other compounds. Air pollution is avoided because they are taking place inside the fluidized bed or inside the electrostatic spray coating. However, coating quality is excellent. But color problems and waste cause or wastage cause troubles. So, that wastage is very high in this kind of applications. Next one is electron beam radiation curing. It has been tested and shows uh, promise. It works very fast and requires no heat. Pre polymers are cured by using an accelerator's beam. Coatings of baked quality can be produced over heat sensitive materials such as wood or plastic as well. That is the advantage of uh, electron beam radiation curing method. Last method of application is auto disposition. 
it is a new metal finishing technology which activates chemically rather than electrically. It uses aqueous dispersions of polymer, pigment and metal activators and is operated at room temperatures often. High coating efficiency is claimed as it is simultaneously pre-treats and coats the metal. So, these are the some of the types of you know uh, application methods of industrial coatings. Now, we see what are the resins used in industrial coatings. We see in a tabular form what is the application and what kind of resins are used. Let us say if you have appliances then acrylic type resins are used in industrial coatings. If you are uh, applying these industrial coatings on automotive, marine and aircrafts then alkyds or acrylics both are used. If you are applying these industrial coatings on containers and closures then epoxies are used in industrial coatings manufacturing. Industrial and farm equipment if you are uh, coating then fluoropolymers are better as industrial coatings. For maintenance related things nitrocellulose are better. Metal furnitures then better to use phenolic resins in industrial coatings. Paper and flexible uh, packaging polyesters are sufficiently good enough to use as industrial coatings. If you are uh, you know applying industrial coating for sheet strip and coil coating then polyamide based uh, industrial coatings are uh, good ones. If you are uh, applying uh, industrial coatings on wood furnitures then polyurethanes, polyvinyls, siliconized polymers, ureas and melamines can be used. Remember these industrial coatings we call name is given to uh, these products as industrial coatings because these are applied on or for the industrially produced products ok. That is the reason these are known as industrial coatings that we have seen in the beginning of the uh, lectures in the uh, current chapter already. Next one is the marine anti fouling coatings. In the marines also fouling is a big problem so then there should be proper industrial coatings and then this problem is there for the uh, you know uh, for the centuries ok. Originally tar and pitch coatings and copper sheeting were used, later lead sheeting came into the use. However, with the advent of steel ships metallic sheeting, metallic sheeting had to be abandoned because of the galvanic corrosion. At present use of copper oxide in either an insoluble vinyl resin binder or a soluble vinyl resin resin binder is common. This work by slowly releasing the toxic copper oxide into the water, but toxic action slowly decays because of pre presence of hydrogen sulphide in polluted waters which results in inactive copper sulphide being formed ok. Further newest and most promising approach is use of argonautin compounds either alone or combined with copper oxide. Paints containing tributyl tin oxide and or tributyl tin fluoride are being used. Test of coatings of organotin compounds chemically linked to film forming polymer are showing increased anti fouling activity. These coatings are very slightly water soluble so that a fresh film of biocide is constantly being exposed. Now we discuss about printing inks and industrial polishes. Printing inks consist of fine dispersion of pigments or dyes in a vehicle. These vehicles may be a drying oil with or without natural or synthetic resins and added dryers or thinners as per the requirement. Conventionally drying oils or petroleum oils and resins are employed in printing inks. Newer synthetic resin systems are finding great favor because they are quick drying and their working properties are excellent. Printing inks have a large variety of compositions and wide variations in properties. This is because of great number of different printing processes and types of papers employed. Because of this one, uh, these you know large number of uh, you know uh, varieties of compositions and then wide variations in properties 
of printing inks font because the applications are like that, different printing processes and different types of papers are employed. So, you know, obviously composition and then properties would change. If the composition is changing, so then obviously, so then obviously properties of printing inks will also change. Expensive new magnetic inks developed for use in a number of electronic machines are the keys to one type of data processing system. Okay. For that specially different types of printing inks are developed which are magnetic inks. Okay. Inks formulated with luminescent pigments achieve a super bright effect obviously. Dyes are melted into the resin and baked and when hard the material is easily powdered. Primarily dyes such as rhodamines, auramines, thioflavins are used in heat set inks. Polymer polishes have become increasingly popular both in industrial applications and in large household field as well. Present day polishes of the self drying water emulsion type had their start in the leather industry in 1926 and since then have undergone numerous improvements as we have seen different types of improvements. So that is all about the different types of uh, surface coating industry products, their constituents, manufacturing, properties, applications, etc. The references for today's lecture are provided here. However, uh, most of the lecture is prepared from this reference book, Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve. Thank you.